longer 5 watt output diode laser. That one right here. I use this uh, primarily for engraving tile, ceramic tile. And I do also use it for wood signs from time to time, but it does not have air assist, so it's primarily dedicated to doing ceramic tiles and a few other little engraving projects. What I'm going to do here is take that 5 watt module off and put on a longer 10 watt module. We're going to do the conversion coming up. I'm Roger, welcome to the shop, and as I said here, I've got my longer, uh, actually longer 3D, they make 3D printers, and it's a good unit, I actually have one up here in the loft that we use all the time, uh, you need to check them out, good product, up there on par with Creality, and actually there's a few spots on it that are better, but not here to hype the 3D printers, we're going to talk about their laser here, uh, this one has a 5 watt output head on it right now, and I've been using it for quite a while, and longer reach out to me and ask me if I'd like to try their 10 watt module. Got one right here. That's what we're going to do. A couple things you need to know. Uh, one is this guard right here. This is removable, but it does not flip up out of the way. You can't just flip it up. So if it's in your way, you're going to actually have to take the screws out on the side and remove it. Focusing. It comes with a focus spacer, and it is going to be different from the 5 watt Here's the 5 watt one, here's the 10 watt one. Big difference. So, something to keep in mind, you want to make sure you use the right one. Actually, uh, because of the way the snout is on this, you wouldn't be able to use this anyway because the, the focus adapter sits on the back there. We'll get into that here in a little bit when we get this on and get it mounted. Okay, if you're going to be doing this conversion, a couple things, and it should seem obvious, but I'm going to point them out. Disconnect your USB, disconnect power, you don't want to power it up at all, from anywhere, no phantom power, nothing. So I'll move a couple things out of the way here. So we'll just simply take these two knobs loose that hold the laser module in place. That's what we use to focus. Then there are two smaller Allen screws, alien head screws right there. You'll need to loosen up and remove. That lets it uh, right up and down on that track. Now you got to find the right size for that. Okay, that's two M&Ms if you're keeping score. There's a little rubber spacer in there, nylon spacer, or composite spacer. It's nylon. Don't lose that. You're going to need that. Oh, that one stayed in there. i got to get him out. There, we'll put him back on the screw so we don't lose it. Okay, that's going to leave your module loose, like so. Next, you'll need to unplug the cord. Don't get wild with this. Get your thumbnail or something up underneath the edge of it, and it'll unplug right out. Don't just yank the wire out. So the next thing we're going to need to do is take out these four screws right here, because we'll need to put those in this bracket onto this module, and as you can see, the 10 watt module is substantially larger. These are also two M&Ms. So we'll set this one out of the way, and the holes should line right up on here, they do. There's actually space for six screws, but I only have four here, so we're only going to use four. Don't be cranking the screws down tight until you get them all started or your light will end up wonky. Just run them down so that the countersink touches. That'll square everything up and you won't end up with something crooked. And once you get all four screws in place, you can torque them down. Don't get wild with it. Just want them tight. It's not like there's a whole lot of vibration there. At least there better not be. Okay, now next, those little screws we took out with the spacers, got to put those back in again. One way to make that a little bit easier is to uh, put your focus knobs back in first. 
I suppose that would hold it a little bit better. I know you can't see that on that side of the kit of the laser, but it's pretty self-explanatory where those little knobs go. And if you look in there, you'll see where those spacers go. Here again, don't over crank these either. Or you won't be able to slide your laser. I've turned this so I can see what I'm doing. You want those just snug. Yeah, actually why I have it on the back here, so you can see the back of the laser. This is the focus spacer. That goes... I'll take my knobs up too much. Okay, this focus spacer, while we've got this on the back here, this goes on the back. It sits on the frame right there, just like that. That's how you set your focus. And I am going to snug up the shield on there just a little bit because I don't want to tip it around. Don't over tighten it or you will rig it. So right there would be focus for going around on my swell board here, but that's not where I want to focus that. I need to find me a tile. Okay, right here is what I'm going to be doing my test on, and right here is the test tile from this laser when it was new, always right on the back. And this is what the 5 watt had. I'll be doing exactly the same burn test. Well, since I have it here, I can show you how we how I focus these, so I'll raise this up. I have a line burned on the my spoil board here already four tiles and I would just simply take this down set it on the focus spacer like that tighten my focus knobs back up now I don't have to do this very often because I do the same thing on here all the time but I thought since it was uh, pointed to the back it'd be easy to see because some people think that that focus spacer was under the snout or the shield and that's now where it goes it goes there so turn this flip this around again around to the front now I have a hole drilled in the front here where I keep my focus spacer I'll be taking out the one for the 5 watt storing my 10 watt one in there and I'll put that away for future reference so the last thing left to do is plug this cable back in it's keyed Let's do little keys on it. Don't try to put it in backwards, it won't go. Don't force it. You bend them pins, you'll have a dickens of a time getting them straightened out to get it plugged in. And make sure it's in there good. Now I'll get the laptop over here, get this hooked up. Okay, one of the first things I always do is I, since I work from center, so I'm gonna get my do a little test fire here. And we are in the center. Next, I'll get my tile in place. Okay, for reference here, this is a 10 watt head I have on here now. And this is the one that was made with a 5 watt head. So I'm going to hit start, let this run, and we'll see how it compares. And of course, I always frame everything first. Looks good. Hit start. Now this does take a while. Take uh, takes a little over an hour. So we'll let it run and do its thing. We'll check back on it from time to time. Okay, should you choose to do this upgrade, and not necessarily on the longer ray 5, which is now a longer ray 10, but on any other laser to go from a 5 watt to a 10 watt. Okay, so you've got twice the power. Does that mean uh, you can run the same time at half the power? No. Can you run the same power at half the time? No. It's not linear. It doesn't work that way. That's why I do these burn tests. So previously I was running my tiles here at 50% uh, power at a thousand millimeters per minute and now I can run 
I can really speed this up if I like. I could very easily run uh, the 70% power of 1750 millimeters a minute. So, like I say, it is not linear. So, just because you got twice the power doesn't mean it takes half the time. You know, there's a big difference there, and there's, it'll be the hold true with the same thing with if you're going to do any cutting. Because just because you got twice the power doesn't mean it's going to cut the time in half. It is not linear that way. And coming up in the next video I'm going to do with this uh, laser head on here, uh, we'll get into some projects and I'll show you the results of it. But um, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, Longer did provide this 10 watt laser head for me to upgrade this laser. And I am here to review this and demonstrate it, which I've done, and how to assemble it and change it. And the power supply that comes with Array 5 is perfectly adequate for it. You don't need to change that. You don't need to change the control board. It's literally just plug and play. But you're going to have to do a burn test on whatever project you're doing to get a benchmark for what you're going to be doing to have success. Like I say, you can't just cut the time in half or cut power in half. It doesn't work that way. Okay, so I did this burn test right here, as you saw me burn. And I decided to uh, then do a tile. And this will be into the next video. And this is the, actually the finished product of it. But that will all come up in the next video and you can see how well this thing works. So another question I'm sure I'm going to get is, yes, but does it cut? Well, yes, it does. And you can get this uh, wood like this at Dollar Tree for, grab another one here, $1.25 you can get these wood shapes. And if you want to screw something up, you can. And you're not out a lot. This is kind of a reject here, a little practice thing. Um, here's one I haven't messed up yet. But, uh, they're good for doing different things. So yes, does this cut? Of course it does. And I used one of these. But while I was doing it, I got this little thing here that turns the camera on and off. And I guess I forgot to push the button. But I did do some cutting. I made uh, State of Illinois. You'll see there's some scorching here because uh, we don't have air assist. But it's not all that bad. This is uh, it's like three millimeter plywood. Maybe you need a little TP. And just to check the accuracy of it, I did this little cog. This is uh, two millimeter plywood. And it, you know, it gets a pretty fine detail out of that. So yes, Longer did provide this 10 watt head for me to upgrade this laser with. However, they're not compensating me or paying me any money to say anything nice about it. Or anything bad. Uh, the only thing I wish it had was air assist, but for what I'm going to use it for, I don't need it. Um, I do ceramic tiles on this particular laser exclusively. I don't need air assist for that. And this is going to greatly speed up the process of when I am doing tiles. You know, if I have to do a batch run of anywhere from 25 to 50 or even 100, uh, what's nice about this is with the micro SD card slot here. I can put the G-code in there, and I don't have to leave the laptop hooked up to it. I do have it hooked up right now because we're doing a lot of different projects, and it was easier for me to alter graphics and stuff in Lightburn with the uh, computer connected rather than making copies of the file. But once again, if you're doing repetitive projects, slate coasters, court coasters, uh, you're cutting or whatever you're doing, having that SD card in there is fantastic because you're not tying up a, a computer. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. If you're interested in uh, maybe upgrading your laser, longer laser, or maybe you just want to buy a 5 or 10 watt longer laser, there'll be links down in the description. Uh, yes, I do get a little bit of a commission from that, but it does not affect your cost. That commission kind of helps keep the lights on and stuff like that around here. Well, I'm Roger in the shop. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.